Good day to all of you. So, today we continue from where we left off in the last class. Remember that uh, we were discussing uh, the topic of trying to regulate multiple output windings. So, most of the power supplies generally have more than one winding. It could be a 5 volt winding, uh, 15 volt plus minus 15 volt supplies, 3.3 volts. So, many uh, various of these uh, standard voltages which are needed to drive many of the control boards or some other applications. So, in general you will have uh, 3 to 5 uh, isolated uh, power outputs, but you, co you can only control one of the outputs through the um, uh, duty cycle control. So, we were discussing that what do we do with the other outputs which are unregulated and how do we regulate them. We discussed a couple of methods, one of them was to put a linear regulator at the output of the unregulated power output, uh, power supply output. The uh, linear regulator will have a small differential uh, between its input regulated input and the uh, final output and uh, this small differential voltage is what is going to cause uh, power loss. However, we uh, discussed that we mentioned that we would put the linear regulator in those windings which are processing lower power the uh, comp as compared to the controlled winding which is processing very high power. The other method was to replace the re linear regulator with a uh, non isolated DC DC converter like a buck converter uh, which has a local control which is supplied by either the output voltage or the unregulated um, voltage of the power supply output thereby trying to achieve uh, a regulated final output. We shall today discuss two other methods. The method of coupled inductor and another method the method which is normally called the magnetic amplifier method. <coughs> so, let us take these methods one by one and uh, try to um, understand how they operate. Uh, let me take the example of a forward converter, isolated forward converter. We have the supply V in, there is a forward converter transformer which is connected in this fashion to a power semiconductor switch. I am indicating the power semiconductor switch by a BJT. However, this BJT could as well be a MOSFET or an IGBT. Now, the forward converter has a demagnetizing winding which is connected in this fashion is coupled with the primary. However, the dot polarities are opposite in this fashion. And there are other windings. Now, these are the secondary windings that I will be drawing. 
winding 1, winding 2, <coughs> and so on. There could be many other windings. Just now for the purpose of di uh, discussion, let us say that we have two windings which means two isolated power supply outputs. Now the dot polarities for these are in this fashion. And they are then connected to the standard buck type topology because forward converter is a buck derived converter. So, this is one of the outputs and we shall call that one as V naught 1. The other output similarly another buck derived topology to that secondary output connected in this fashion. and with some load resistance <coughs> and we shall call that one as V naught 2. V naught 2. <coughs> Now, under the normal conditions, the, the primary and I am going to mark that in a different color. So, these windings will all be on the same core. this will be on the same core. And so, also the demagnetizing winding in this fashion. So, all the green colored windings represent one transformer, the forward converter transformer. <coughs> now, the inductance I am going to represent it with another color. Now, this inductor and this inductor are wound on the same core, they are coupled. So, these two are coupled. And that is why it is called the coupled inductor method. Coupled inductor method. So, let us do some more naming. This is secondary V S. 1, this is secondary V S 2. I will call this as point A and the voltage here is V A. I will call this as point B and the voltage here is V B. <coughs> this is inductor L 1 and this is inductor L 2, they are coupled. So, in the design of this particular coupled inductor, let us uh, make the following, put the following constraint. 
let us say V S 1 or one second. So, let us say V S 2 by V S 1 is equal to n. What I mean is this ratio to this ratio is n. Do not confuse it to the ratios between the secondaries. So, let us say if this is the primary winding, this is the secondary winding, this is the demagnetizing winding, this is the secondary winding 2 which is n s 2 by n s 1. So, this ratio is the ratio between these two windings n. So, we will try to maintain the same ratio n even for the inductor windings these two inductor windings meaning if <coughs> if you have n l 2 by n l 1 where n l 2 is the number of turns on this for inductor for the inductor L 2 and N L 1 the number of turns on the inductor L 1. Okay. So, the idea here is that we try to maintain the ratio of the secondary inductors windings and the ratio of the secondary windings themselves to be same. The inductors are coupled with this ratio, the secondary windings are coupled with the same ratio. Okay. So, that is the basic concept here and now, now let us say that one of the windings is controlled and only one of the windings needs to be regulated. Uh, uh, by the coupled inductor method. Now, let us take V naught 2. V naught 2 is actually V B minus V L 2, V naught 2 the voltage here is this voltage minus the drop across the inductor V L 2. <coughs> now, what is the relationship between V B and V A? Now, V B is equal to n times V A because V S 2 is equal to n times V S 1. This is coming from here. And what is the relationship between V L 2 and V L 1? V L 2 is equal to n times V L 1 and that is coming from this. So, therefore, V naught 2 equals 
n times v a minus n times v l 1 which is equal to n times v a minus v l 1. That is substituting for v b this here and for v l 2 that. So, that you get n v a minus n v l 1. <coughs> now, this is nothing but v not 1 or let me write here v not 1 which is equal to v a minus v l 1 v a minus the drop across l 1 would be v not 1. So, that is what we are indicating here. So, therefore, this becomes v not 1 and overall v not 2 is equal to n times v not 1. So, this is an interesting relationship. Now, suppose let us say we control one of the outputs through duty cycle control, then the other output is related only by n which is a fixed physical parameter which is the winding ratio and automatically the other would also be controlled because of the coupling. So, this basically is the concept. So, if you feed back this through the opto into the control circuitry here plus minus we have a v naught reference. Now, which v naught reference? Let us specify that it is v naught 1 reference, then the output of that goes through a PI controller and then goes through PWM, drive circuit to this. So, the duty cycle here gets controlled by sensing of V naught 1 and once V naught 1 is regulated, V naught 2 and V naught 1 are related in this fashion by only a fixed factor n. So, if v naught 1 is regulated, v naught 2 is also automatically regulated. So, this way uh, regulated output of the other windings are also achieved. This is an interesting method. However, in practice you will not get such a tight regulation as indicated by this equation. You would understand that we have made some assumptions inherently saying that the diodes are ideal or if they are not ideal, these voltages cancel off and they do not affect the final output. But in actuality, if you see when we write V naught 2, which is v b minus v l 2, it is actually v s 2 minus v diode drop minus 
minus V L 2. Now this diode drop is nothing but the diode drop of this component and the diode drops of the components is actually obtained in this fashion. So, if I am having the I V characteristic of this diode of this diode static characteristic and let us say we have the forward characteristic which is something like this for the diode. We are not so much interested in the reverse characteristic for now. Now depending upon the amount of current that flows. So, let us say we have some particular amount of current I S 2 that flows the operating point oh sorry I have wrongly named the axis I am going to correct that this is this is the V and this is the I. and let us say some current I S 2 flows here. The voltage across the device V D S 2 is at this value. Now, for the first winding which is given as V A minus V L 2 sorry V L 1 this is V S 1 minus V D of S 1 minus V L 1. Now, this diode drop corresponds to this component here and this component will be carrying a current I S 1 through the secondary and let us say it is higher power and therefore higher current. So, it is somewhere here. I S 1 and its corresponding diode drop V D S 1 will be much different from V D S 2 and therefore, and therefore, there will be a mismatch between these two values they will not exactly cancel as we have put the equations like this. So, if you include into this those V D drops you will see that there is a cross reg uh, misregulation which occurs and it will not be as tightly regulated like this equation the idealized equation as shown here. So, I was just indicating to you what is the effect that would come in due to just one component. So, the voltage drop across V A and also across L 1 can vary what we have not considered here further is the resistance winding resistance of the inductance
So, if this is a small value of resistance due to the winding of the inductance, this too would cause a non ideal term to come in. The voltage drop across this is nothing but I L if this is L into R L. So, in actuality the voltage here would be V s minus V d minus V l minus I l r l would be equal to V naught. So, this term and this term are load dependent and they will be different in both the windings. So, there will not be an exact match in the coupling between these two in terms of uh, the coupling ratio n. Okay. Because of that what you could say is you will get a regulation better than not regulating and the regulation of the regulated one would worsen a bit compared to not coupling. However, by coupling you will get a regulation in both the windings to an extent that it is better than not regulating, but not as good as the linear regulator solution that we proposed earlier. Okay. But in the linear regulator case there is dissipation and therefore, the efficiency will be slightly lesser, but in the case of the coupled inductor case the efficiency will be better. So, let us see one more technique the magnetic amplifier technique. method. Here the core principle is the manner in which we are going to saturate an inductor. We are going to put an extra inductor component and we will call that one as a saturable inductor that is we will allow that to saturate is indicated like that. This is called a saturable inductor, but we would like it to saturate under certain conditions. <coughs> now, if you see that the we have a current I L that is flowing through the inductor we will call this as L s the saturable inductor. If you look at this inductor it is static characteristic called B h curve, B is called the flux density which is equal to phi flux by the area of cross section of the core and on the x axis we put H the magnetic field which is given by an I L by mean magnetic length or the path length. Now, if you take the B H curve like that. You may have already seen or studied earlier the B H curve for all the magnetic material is in this fashion. So, this area 
is the area where the core is saturated both here on the positive side and the third quadrant around here. This is the linear operating region and you see that when it traverses in one direction, it takes this path. and when it is coming down, it takes the other path and this is called the hysteresis effect. Anyway, the hysteresis effect is only going to cause loss. This is a kind of a low pass filter effect. We will try to understand this without the hysteresis. So, what I am going to do is erase this and make a much more simpler curve. So, this is the saturation region a bit more idealistic to understand it is easier and this is the B H curve. So, beyond this it will saturate let me call B sat minus B sat. So, what it basically means is if you give I L if you give a value of current I L greater than I L 1 then this inductor will saturate. Now, to this inductor if I now apply a voltage to this inductor if you now apply a voltage like that through some circuit and if that voltage is V L, then the current I L is given by 1 by L integral of V L d t and if V L is a constant, you will see that the current is increasing if V L is constant, V L current I L will increase in a linear manner. It keeps on increasing and as I L keeps on increasing till it reaches let us say the limit I L 1. The moment it reaches this limit, the core saturates, it will not no longer go like that. In fact, at that point, it will start taking a turn in this fashion. The current will steeply increase, the voltage across the inductor will fall. It becomes 0 because there is no d phi by d t, because the voltage across the inductor is also n d phi by d t and in this zone d phi by d t equals 0 and therefore, the voltage across the inductor becomes 0, this falls down and because it falls down the current will shoot because the external circuit sees 0 impedance, 0 voltage and if it is not limited the current can shoot. 
So, we say that at this point the inductor has saturated and the voltage across it has become 0 and it is now a short circuit, it is as though the inductor is not there. So, this is the principle that we will be using. We will make the inductor to provide impedance for some period of time, let us say d t and then make it saturate and make it into a plane conductor during which time it will not act as an impedance and it will allow uh, the, po uh, the power to or the voltage to uh, pass along to the other side. So, basically the inductor is being used as a magnetic switch. Therefore, it is called the magnetic amplifier and we will see how we will use this concept that we just discussed in the context of our converter regulation. Now, let us take uh, the typical forward converter. So, let me put in this circuit switch, we are familiar, we have the demagnetizing winding which we have included. Now, let us say that we have one winding and to that winding we now include the, let us say we have the other winding which is the regular controlled winding with the standard buck derived circuit and this is actually the one that is fed back and used for control. Now, the other unregulated winding is to be controlled in the following manner using saturable inductor. Now, here let us include the saturable inductor. L s and then we have our regular circuit diode So, this is this is the unregulated winding V naught, this is V naught 1 which is regulated. Now, there is one more item at this point you are going to feed in some controlled current source which is being taken from the output 
and fed in here. We may also put a diode here such that it is only in one direction. <coughs> Okay, so, this is the circuit that we need to discuss now. How does this operate? Now, let us say the switch Q. So, Q is on. So, when the Q is on, the dot end becomes positive. The dot end here becomes positive and at this point just before the inductor was freewheeling, but the inductor here is presenting an impedance. So, this there is a voltage drop across this. Therefore, this voltage does not carry forward and appear here to turn off this diode. So, the, the voltage drop across this is entirely uh, matched by this uh, supplied voltage. The inductor is continuing to free wheel. However, because of this voltage, there is a current flow because there is a voltage across this, there is a current flow in this direction which starts flowing in this fashion, in this path. Now, you may ask how is it going against this diode. If the inductor current here freewheeling is let us say for example, 10 amps and if this, this uh, a saturable inductor current is around 1 amp, then it is 10 minus 1 9 amp flowing in this direction. So, as long as this current is less than this inductor freewheeling current, you will have a path through this to reach back again here. So, as this inductor current is increasing at some point this will saturate. The moment this saturates this becomes a short and once this becomes a short this voltage appears at this point and reverse biases this diode. Then it becomes a normal buck converter operation where the power is put into this inductor charging it up. And then when this Q turns off, when this Q turns off, this dot end becomes negative, the non dot end becomes positive, the inductor is freewheeling in this fashion. This diode is off because this dot end is positive, this would come in here and turn off this diode. Now, as far as this inductor is concerned, through this inductor there will be a current flow in the reverse direction. Look at this source. From the output there is a DC current, a DC current which is made to flow through in this direction. This is off and therefore, it will flow in this direction and back again to its negative point. So, it will start flowing in this manner during the time when this is off. So, when the current is flowing in the reverse direction through the saturable inductor, it is bringing down the flux within the core. When the current is flowing in the negative direction in this area, it is bringing the inductance flux value negative lower somewhere here. 
So, let us say the current has current value is up to this point. If the current value negative value is at this point, then the inductor would have reached here. If the negative value of the current is there, then the inductor flux would have reached here or if it was here, the inductor flux would have reached here. So, you can make the flux value within the core to be anywhere on this lo locus. It could be any flux value. Now, when you give a positive voltage, when you give a positive voltage, when this is turned on, when this is turned on, this is positive and the voltage across the inductor is positive, the same value V in n, n times into V in. The current rate is decided by voltage across the inductor by L will be the d i L by d t. If this is fixed, then this current rate will be more or less fixed. Of course, this is this is got from the unregulated voltage V in. So, more or less the current uh, rate uh, will be uh, near about uh, a, a fixed current rate. But the more important point is that the flux rate also is connected to the current rate. So, the flux will also increase from the point it was left previously during the off state and keep continuing from that point to saturation. So, note that if the inductor were brought to a much lower value with the same current rate, it will take a longer time for it to go up to reach saturation. If the inductor was brought down to a value here, it will take that much more longer time to reach saturation. So, which means that the inductor will present an impedance for a longer time in a period to the input source voltage, which means that this will be free wheeling for a longer time, which means in the standard buck converter uh, uh, notation, this will be the buck converter, the buck derived converter, this portion will be in the off time portion. If the inductor saturates less, then it takes is brought to a negative value uh, relative uh, uh, relatively higher up towards the origin, then it takes a shorter time for it to reach saturation. And therefore, this will lose its inductance property sooner and the voltage will come across here sooner and the on time is more and therefore, you have a modulation there. So, which can be used for adjusting the V naught to locally here independent of this duty ratio. Okay. So, that is the principle that we are trying to follow. Let, let us um, uh, understand with some waveforms what is happening. Let me draw some waveforms for you. Consider, let me make some space. This is your V naught 2. Now, let us have
the voltage across VLS, the voltage across that and let us also write the flux waveform in the core of the saturable reactor. And then let us also see what is the voltage that is appearing at this point and we will call that point C and voltage at point C. So, let us observe these three. Now, let us divide the entire thing into time segments during d t s the switch q is on during 1 minus d t s the switch is off. Okay. So, during d t s we shall mark that portion 1 minus d T s and so on repeats d T s 1 minus d T s. Now, this d corresponds to d T s here what you apply as the signal to the transistor q. Now, let us say that the moment the transistor Q is turned on, the voltage across V L S the arrow direction shown has taken some positive value like that. And, and let us say the flux in the core was 0 to start with meaning we we are here to start with this is the point where we are beginning ok and the flux from here starts increasing linearly let us say because the V L S is constant starts increasing in this fashion. At some point here it saturates let me call that a phi sat and this rate at which it increase is whatever voltage you have V s V s divide by n L s where n L s is the number of turns on the saturable inductor that is the rate at which it will increase. The moment it saturates here the inductance will lose its inductance property the voltage across it becomes 0 and it goes on there like that. So, this continues till the end of the on time at which point the Q is switched off the moment Q is switched off the voltage goes negative because the dot end becomes negative the non dot end becomes positive this is freewheeling and the voltage across the inductor starts taking 
and negative value. And this negative value is coming due to the application of this. There is a negative current flowing through this negative DC current and if this DC current is flowing through this in the opposite direction, there has to be a um, negative voltage appearing across that. And the effect of the negative current flowing through that is to pull the flux down. So, the flux is linearly decreasing, it is getting pulled down to this value to some level. And now, let us say it has gone lesser than 0 and now you again switch on Q. When you switch on Q, this jumps positive. and this increases at some rate, it has to go from negative, you see earlier it had to go from 0 to phi sat. Now, with the same rate, these two are parallel almost parallel lines, these two are parallel lines, it has to go to saturation, it will take a longer time to go to saturation. And then it becomes 0 here and so on and then this will start coming down. Now, this rate at which it is coming down is controlled by the current source rate I here. So, that this current source will actually determine this fall rate. So, therefore, you can bring it to whatever level you would like to have the inductor come down to either here or here or here or here. And then from there, this will go parallel to these lines, these will be parallel lines because here this voltage is determined by the output. So, you could get actually different points of times when the inductor can actually go down, go to 0 like that. So, now let us look at the output wave shape. You see the output uh, at V c, at V c if you look at it here, it will be V s minus this and when the inductor saturates during this time, that voltage whatever V s voltage would come down to C. So, at the time when the inductance has saturated, the, there is a voltage across C and so also here at this time when the inductance are saturated, there is a voltage across C. And if you vary the current that is allowed through the inductor to reset, you can get different voltages and therefore, different outputs here. So, this is the basic concept. We will study this further in the next class and try to evolve a circuit to implement this uh, in the next class. Thank you for now.